women cricket commentators have reached such a high standard that the established Simon Hughes is being replaced by Ali Mitchell for Channel 5's test highlights this summer. Sunset Plus Fine, who produced the program, wanted to freshen up their content and were impressed with Mitchell when she worked on their rashes production for BT Sport in the winter. C5 also have top pundits Jeffrey Boycott and Michael Vaughn on their domestic test team. So it is Hughes, editor of The Cricketer magazine, who has made a brand of his analyst role, who has had to make way for Mitchell. Sky Sports are also bringing a female presence to their test coverage, with former England players Issa Gu and Ebony Reinford Brent, plus Ossie Mel Jones, being given prominent roles. BBC Radio's test match special already use Gu and Reinford Brent on a regular basis in talk sport who have won the audio rights to the Sri Lanka and West Indies tours next winter, are certain to appoint female commentators along with Darren Gough. FA councillors rightly showed concern on Wednesday that Premier League clubs will use the winter break being introduced in February 2020 to make lucrative commercial trips abroad. Arsenal's Ivan Gazidis and Tottenham's Rebecca Capelhorn assured them this wouldn't be the case. But the Blazers are spot on in wanting the FA to forbid any extra fixtures during that period. Fans chief Malcolm Clark, who sits on the council, also asked that some of the cash compensating clubs for losing the FA Cup fifth round weekend, and any subsequent replays, is used to help supporters with travel costs for those ties, which will be played in midweek. Sophie Goldschmidt, former RFU financial director and now CEO of World Surfing, cancelled the latest round of the championship tour in Perth for fear of shark attacks. Goldschmidt said, Surfing is unique in that wild animals inhabit our performance environment. Did she never see RFU Blazers leaving the building after a full day on their free booze at Twickenham? A Crington Stanley's follically challenged manager John Coleman has been promised a free hair transplant after guiding the club into League One for the first time. Hopefully this bonus will not get the club in trouble, given the FA's ridiculous fuss over a Crington chairman Andy Holt buying his players burgers after important wins. Swans Frequent flyers Swansea may be fighting against relegation from the top flight but their American ownership lead the way. When it comes to attending Premier League meetings. Jason Levine and Stephen Kaplan make sure one of them always attends. The quarterly PL summits even if it means flying from the States for that sole purpose. Both of them were at the most recent gathering last week. The pair believe it is crucial for owners to be around the PL shareholders. Table when crucial issues for the future of the club, such as the split of TV revenues, are being discussed. However this is not the case for any other Premier League club under foreign control, with the owners making rare visits or not attending at all. In contrast, British owners such as David Gold, West Ham, Peter Coates, Stoke, Tony Bloom, Brighton, Steve Parrish, Crystal Palace, and Mike Garlick, Burnley, are always there. Former England team boss Andy Flower, kept on by the ECB after the 2013-14 Ashes debacle, ticked all the boxes to be the new national selector and was interested in the position. Instead the ECB have gone for Ed Smith, who is the most left-field choice imaginable. Perish the thought that England cricket director Andrew Strauss would have felt threatened by the re-emergence of Flower in a high-profile role.